Hello guys, Lila here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm an American girl who's living in Hamburg, Germany. I've lived in Germany now for a total of altogether um, around two and a half years about about there. And so in this video, I'm going to, and sorry if that bird is really loud. It's um, now summer. Is it summer? I'm so confused. We had a long winter. I think it's summer now. It's so hot. Germany? or Hamburg has just extreme weather. It's super weird. I don't know if it's usually like this, but yeah. So winter was the most coldest winter, I think in decades. And then summer now it feels like the rainforest hot, but in the shade, it's really nice. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a few of the questions I didn't answer in my last question and answer video. And then I'm gonna go down memory lane. Some of you who have watched my YouTube videos back in 20, 18 2019 you might recognize this book inside i have all the cultural differences that i wrote down from my old youtube channel that i had up for a few years i thought i could make a new series where i'd go back in time look at some cultural differences that maybe i didn't understand then now i maybe understand a bit better and yeah first a word from our sponsor the sponsor is lingoda lingoda has this language challenge which is really cool you can get a hundred percent cash back if you take their language challenge for three months and i'll tell you guys about that in a second but first who is lingoda what's lingoda it's the number one online trusted language school it was founded in berlin germany in 2013 so they provide online language courses in english business English, Spanish, French, and German uh, to over 70,000 students worldwide. Personally, I've tried a group class with Lingoda and I've also had a private lesson with a teacher from Lingoda. This private teacher really helped me on my exam. So I know for sure they have really good qualified expert teachers on there. So I do recommend Lingoda. And I'll show you guys in a second to how to make a class on the website and how to sign up and stuff like that. But yeah, the teacher I had with Lingoda, he was so good. At the time I was really struggling and I was I had my test in two days and he told me, okay, this is what you need to focus on. He told me he told me to focus on memorizing all the German uh, grammar in this way that I could remember it in like a visual way. And so he helped me set up this whole system on how to memorize for my test. And so I really, really do. I thank Lingoda for passing my, uh, my test at that time, so. Thank you, Lingoda. <laughs> yeah, that was back in 2018. The uh, Lingoda Language Sprint. It's a three month challenge, language challenge. So if you guys are looking for motivation for something to push you to learn the language you want to learn, I think this is a really great opportunity to get that that push to just do, do the language, learn the language, because sometimes you just need that push. So what it is, um, this language challenge with Lingoda, 40,000 people have taken this language challenge in the past. So you go to the Super Sprint. If you attend 30 classes a month, for three months, you get 100% cash back. Um, this early bird offer is only valid until June 24th. And then after June 24th, it'll be replaced by a 50% cash back. So after this early bird special, then the normal sprint is if you attend 15 classes a month for three months, then you get 50% cash back. I'm gonna put a link down below in the description box and a voucher code. But yeah, so people take in these challenges to boost your speaking confidence and that's why they've really loved this challenge and that's why so many people have taken it in the past so if you're looking for a boost in your confidence in speaking and you want to see some results in a really short amount of time then i highly recommend this challenge so why join in the sprint so transform your language skills and advance your career in just three months if you attend all your classes you can get 100 percent cash back you can sign up until july 16th the sprint courses start august 2nd and both plans require a 49 euro or 59 dollar deposit and these plans are paid in three monthly installments so why should you learn with lingoda you have flexible learning hours you can choose whenever you want to take classes 24 7 to learn anytime anywhere you have qualified native language speaking teachers so that's awesome and so they'll teach you some real cultural references and local expressions you'll have small group classes and average for a class is two to three students maximum five students and the teachers always put an emphasis on speaking so that's really important so are you ready to commit yourself to a intensive language learning course and speak a language confidently in just three months so sign up with my link down below in the description box use my voucher code so my voucher code is fast 48 f-a-s-t 48 my voucher code it'll save you 20 euros or 25 dollars on your deposit and if you're aiming really high then definitely 
try out their super sprint and sign up before June 24th. So make sure you also read the frequently asked questions, the FAQ, which will be linked down below before joining. And if you want to see some real life student stories and experiences from doing this language challenge, check out Lingoda's Instagram, which will also be linked down below. The success stories will be on their highlights, in their highlights on their Instagram page. And make sure to read the TNC before applying as well. This is when you log into your Lingoda account. This is what you'll see. Book a class now. And then you'll come over here to the book classes section. And also I can choose different levels here, which level I want to choose. Say you want to start from the very beginning, A11. Then A11's right here. Here is chapter one. And then this is going to be the first class for your A11 class. And then you can choose between group or private class. You can choose the weekday you want to have the class, what time, 7 a.m. until 11 or one in the morning. Let's check out the itinerary, shall we? So let's view info. So here you can see the lesson description. You're gonna learn how to negotiate your work conditions. Ooh, that's cool. Learning outcomes. You can learn the uh, vocabulary about the contracts. And so you can use your business German confidently. So yeah, you can also choose the group classes here. And then you can click book class. Yeah, it's pretty easy. The first question on the list of questions you guys have asked me is, is it hard to date a German? Which is kind of a funny question. Well, I don't know, I obviously prefer it, so it must must not be that difficult. <laughs> I actually, I don't mean to prefer it, it just kind of happens. I asked my boyfriend this yesterday and we had a conversation about it and I thought it was so funny. It depends. <laughs> I think it's only hard if, you're, if you don't know that there's any cultural differences and maybe you're expecting Germans to all speak perfect English and to be confident speaking English because this is a big one that I kind of didn't think about until my boyfriend mentioned that. He's like, before he met me, before he had an interest in doing an internship in the US, if an American approached him or I mean if an English speaker approached him, he would have avoided. No matter if the person was super good looking or you know, flirting with him, he would avoid speaking English because he was so uncomfortable speaking English. That's like the biggest, I feel like, difference. And I didn't realize that either back when I was first studying in Oldenburg. I remember everyone I tried approaching. It's really, it's a hard life in Germany when you're single because there's this shyness um, to the culture. And especially Northern Germany, they're really shy in Northern Germany. Yeah, and then you add on top of that, having a different language. So if you're right now watching and you don't have very great German, that's gonna be a challenge to find a German who's very comfortable. The guys in Oldenburg would not want to talk to me. They didn't want to talk to me. Like, I think that's why I met my German in California, because he had chosen to leave Germany and come, I don't know. I'm, maybe you guys have different experience and there's bugs everywhere summertime So if you have caught yourself a German and they're not afraid to speak English with you or if you have really great German and You're dating someone in German, which I did that I dated someone for six months who did not want to speak English with me and it was a challenge But I liked it. I really wanted to learn German and that's the other thing I think the people who comment on my videos are an exception people who watch my kind of videos or cultural videos they're already interested in other cultures um, they're interested in language learning their English must be good enough to watch my videos I'm speaking in English in most of my videos so so I think you guys who are watching are if you're German watching I think you're a different kind of German than the ones just in the general population I think so I really have sympathy for people who are dating and they're still learning the other language and the partner is patient with them so I think good job if you're a patient partner and you're teaching your partner your language good job <laughs> when we're not speaking about language differences then what's different okay so well, one little difference my boyfriend and i just learned the other day is we have just these little gestures like for me i'll say like psh, which means like p s h this little psh, that means to me like yeah right i don't believe you or something like that and he heard this as shh. so he thought i was telling him to shush to shut up <laughs> and he's like hey that's rude and I was like what I, what so like there's things like that which is just funny d miscommunications and stuff that if you're really sensitive and you're like easily offended I think you might have some trouble dating a German maybe I don't know so that's why I'm here right um, I like Germany I like the I like the health insurance even though I'm paying so much taxes so way way more than in the US um, it's okay because I don't have that stress when I go to the doctor and I don't know. I like a safe life. I don't I don't need a lot of money. I just want a safe life. So well, I just saw a funny difference I wrote down. You'll hear a lot of Americans telling their dog, uh-uh, bad, uh-uh. 
and that means like like no bad dog um so like trainers will teach you how to say a really strict ah uh -uh. um and then my boyfriend was laughing so hard when he hears this from americans because in german ah uh -uh means dog poop <laughs> so this one is just the funniest difference i love these differences just such random differences. How do you get a German to laugh? I made this joke up myself this week. How do you pronounce the, the letters HH? Get it? Ah! Let me know in the comments if you got my joke. Haha. -ha. Well, where am I from? I'm from a city near Los Angeles, California, so I'm used to living by close to the beach. So it's definitely new for me living in Hamburg where we have seasons, like I'm used to palm trees and I'm used to just mild weather all year, summer weather all year, so yeah, it's been quite the shock for me to live in Hamburg, Germany, but I'm just happy summer's here and I hope next winter is not as cold as this last winter. That's all. The heat is different here. Summer, when it's like, oh, it's a summer day, for me it's like, oh my gosh, this is so hot. It never gets too hot where I'm from, but I, I like what we get instead. See what's behind me? These flowers and, and like the different trees, like all of these leaves will fall off, which is still crazy to me that the leaves fall off and then the leaves grow back. That's, that's what I'm not used to, being from Southern California. I, I think it's really beautiful here. Kartoffelsalat? Oh, do you like Wurstchen mit Kartoffelsalat? That's like wieners with potato salad? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've gotten used to it now that Germans like to put their wieners in all the soup cans. <laughs> um, that came out weird. I mean, the, the hot dog things. Um, I've noticed that like our soups in the US, I'm not used to seeing hot dogs put into soup, which by the way, my boyfriend would be yelling or not yelling, but he'll be telling, if he was here, he would say, they're not hot dogs, they're version. <laughs> uh, yeah, I call them hot dogs because to me they look like hot dogs, but what do I know? I don't know. Kartoffel salat, I, the only kartoffel salat I like is without mayonnaise and the only time I've ever had that was at a beer garden in Munich, Germany in the south. I have tried here in the north to find Kartoffelsalat made with uh, vinegar like they do at that beer garden in Munich, but nope, in the north they only have it with mayonnaise and I don't like mayonnaise, so. But I'm also sehr wählerisch, so sehr, very picky, so that's why. So if you guys ask me anything about food, it's usually like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think the only food I ever like is like mac and cheese and stuff. Have you visited Oldenburg since you've been back? And yep, I visited Oldenburg uh, in October. That was like right when I came back to Germany uh, this year, 2021. And that was really nice. I got together with a friend of mine who I studied in the, my B2 German class with. So that was really nice to catch up with her, get some, get a reunion back from 2018 and see Oldenburg again. We, we did a bike ride around Oldenburg, which I really appreciate, now that I'm living in Hamburg, I really appreciate the bike lanes that we had in Oldenburg because the bike lanes here in Hamburg is just, it's always mixed. You're like on the street a lot of the time. And I'm just, with my history on bikes, I don't trust being in the street. <laughs> so I'm not riding a bike here in Hamburg and probably won't for a long time, but we'll see. Everyone else I've seen around here seems so confident on their bikes here in Hamburg when they're on the street, crossing the street, in the middle of the street. And I'm like, ah, I could not do that, I think. And do you know the other Americans in Germany who make YouTube videos? And no, we don't talk to each other. Um, I feel like it's the same, like if you're a German person living in the US and then someone tells you, ooh, I have a German friend who also lives here. And then that German's probably gonna be like, okay. Uh, so I think that's kind of how it is for us. We're like, okay, yeah, we come from the same country, but we're really, really different from each other. So just because someone is my same nationality who also makes YouTube videos. So I'm more interested to make videos personally with like Germans, I think, cause I wanna learn about Germans and what Germans think. Uh, I kind of, I, ha I think Americans, we all have the same experiences. So I think it's more interesting for me to, to make videos with Germans and learn more about German culture. Cause that's what I'm interested in personally. But I know you guys want us, I guess, to talk, but yeah, sorry, we don't talk sadly. The only, my favorite German word, gosh. Well, the one you guys gave me all this advice for in my last video was about our, uh, how to say goodbye on the phone in a formal way because I forgot to say that. Yes, my company were very informal, I've noticed in my company. So thank you guys so much for giving me all the formal directions. That's good to know in the future if I'm ever speaking with someone that's not within my company in German. And so you guys gave me this advice to say Auf Wiederhören but I can't say that word. I don't know how bad I butchered it but every time I say it my boyfriend is laughing his butt off he's so he finds it so funny how I can't say these O with dots so 
and especially after an H, I don't know why the after an H with, oh God, it's so, it's so hard for me to pronounce, but thank you guys. I'm gonna probably try to avoid that word for the rest of my life, but um, Auf Wiederhören, Auf Wiederhören. Did I get it? I don't know. Uh, natural disasters in the US versus Germany. So, um, cause someone asked me what were the fires like in California? And yeah, that was pretty crazy. I was driving to work every day and just driving through these red clouds. It was really crazy. I think natural disasters is something that apparently, like, according to my boyfriend who's from Hamburg, he's never experienced natural disaster. I think the only thing you guys experience here is flooding from so much rain sometimes. So, you know, but not like extreme flooding like some countries get. So like for me personally, I've experienced a lot of earthquakes. Southern California, we have a lot of earthquakes. So every time here, our neighbor makes a drop something or, or anything where the floor is shaking from construction, I think it's an earthquake. And every time I'm saying to my boyfriend, oh my God, earthquake. And I know I'm in Northern Germany where there is no earthquakes, says my boyfriend. Um, I can't believe it because I think I'm just so used to having earthquakes like every year there's like a little one usually so and I've only experienced one kind of biggish medium one and that's when like the whole house was shaking and the front door was shaking and all the glasses were shaking so so yeah I think it's hard for me to accept that there's no natural disasters here so not complaining so another benefit I think of living in northern Germany no earthquakes although I'm never gonna remember that same thing with Sundays. I'm never gonna remember that shops are closed on Sundays. I'm just not. I've accepted it. I don't know if it's because it's been pandemic and everything's been locked down for a year or whatever, but yeah, cause now that things are opening, I, maybe I'm gonna start remembering again that things are closed on Sundays. Cause every Sunday, every Sunday to my boyfriend, I'm like, oh yeah, let's go get this. And then every time he's like, what day is it? I'm like, oh my God, ah, I keep forgetting. Do you find German history interesting? So I used to find German history very interesting. It was the main only reason I came to Germany was because I found this book. So it was a World War II sightseeing book. And so I had like, I highlighted all the places I wanted to visit in Germany. So that's why I came over to Germany in the first place back when I was studying in London. And so I did this big World War II tour around Germany. So that's what I found very interesting. And I, whenever I was speaking with a German, I was always so surprised why they just had no interest in it. They're like, they didn't want to talk about it. Like they've had enough history lessons on it so they're all very educated on it i mean of course there's probably some who are i'm sure you guys down below will let me know if you're interested in it but so that's the only history i really know about so i think it's fun going on these tours like i did um in dresden where i found out about like the kings that used to rule the land in dresden in the south so yeah it's kind of cool to learn about the kings and queens and stuff like that before there was the world war ii stuff because i think you know this is just this five-year period of german history that obviously the world has focused on for obvious reasons but yeah so i'm enjoying now learning more about german history and and like like here in hamburg the hafen like if you just go to the hafen and you see how many vessels these giant container ships are going through the hafen i didn't realize the history of hamburg is like so special so i'm really looking forward to in the future to learn more about it i want to go on a tour let me know anyone down below if you know any good tours here in hamburg where i can learn about like the history of, of the Hafen, the, the port here in Hamburg. I want to see some big boats. It's a new hobby of mine, I guess. I don't know. Might as well. You know, you're living in the Hamburg. It's a really cool thing to see. So have you had Grünkohl? Yes. Oldenburg, Oldenburg, Germany loved their Grünkohl, their Pinkel or something in Grünkohl, I think is what they called it. So it's like the sausage with the uh, green cabbage. It's like cooked hot green cabbage stuff. I liked it with the meat alone. I did not like it. Definitely different. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It's like healthy, healthy, hearty German food. I definitely like Grünkohl much better than Rotkohl. So the red cabbage, not my favorite. And then the last question was, what sound does an elephant make in German? And I asked my boyfriend this and he said it's Terra or I can't do it. Terra, Terra, Terra. I can't do it, can't do it, but it's just, sound something like that and so those are all the question and answers and then i'm gonna just share a few things a few random ones in here and then the next video i'll just dedicate more to my Lierbuch, my empty book for dummies just open a random page here popular words in german lately yup geil richtigeil i forgot about that one yup i don't i haven't heard that maybe because all the shops and the restaurants have been closed so i haven't heard too many Germans around me. So Jop means yeah, geil, richtig geil. Ah, 
I, yeah, I'm saying that a lot just now. That's just in my vocabulary. It's funny to see when I first learned that. Richtige. That's like really cool. Richtige. Verrat. Oh, how cute. This was the time I couldn't say these words in German. The word for betrayal and the word for bicycle. I couldn't tell the difference between these words at the time. But now that I have learned German now for a couple of years, it's funny because it's so easy now. Betrayal is Verrat. Bicycle, Verrat. It is small difference, but now I can really see the difference. And then I'm reading here about how in Germany your school system splits the children up, which at the time when I first learned that was so shocking to me since in the US we all stay in the same school until we're 18. Everyone, no matter what your interests are, everyone has to stay there until 18. So that really shocked me. Like my boyfriend left when he was like 16 or 17. You're just allowed to leave high school, which totally still shocks me that that's a thing i think in australia my, my dad's australian so i know he left school when he was really young too i don't know why california doesn't give you that option you can't graduate with anything before in the u.s they pressure you to go to university so everyone's expected to go to university which is really stupid honestly like because not everyone wants to go to university i always wonder if i had another option like would i have chosen that maybe i think i'm gonna end the video there and let me know if you have any other questions for me down below see you guys later